Today's video is brought to you by Retro Game Treasure, and I'll show you guys what they sent me at the end of this video. But for now, let's get right into today's list. Now, the Nintendo Wii was released November 19th, 2006, and since then, it has seen over 1,650 games released for it. And while some of these games are amazing, the vast majority of them are nearly unplayable trash aimed at young kids and soccer moms. With so many terrible games, it's hard to whittle it down to just 10, but I think these games I've picked today will represent just how shitty some of these shovelwares can be. Now, keep in mind that this is just my own personal opinions, and so if for whatever reason you actually liked any of these terrible games, that's okay. The world needs dumb people too. But, for real though guys, it's just an opinion, so feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. But anyway, let's jump in with number 10. Truth or Lies. And this game is the saddest attempt I've ever seen at making a party game. It is based around just lie detectoring and seeing whether or not your friends are lying. So you use a microphone which is very shitty quality, sounds awful and you can't really hear what you're saying, and the lie detector will tell you whether or not your friends are lying about being a virgin or not. Problem is, it doesn't work at all. Like, it is basically randomly true or randomly false. It could ask what color the sky is, and then when you answer blue, it will claim you're lying. The worst part about it is, the software, even if it did somehow work, it's still not a very fun game, it's still not a very fun premise. Who wants to, to lie detect to your friends at a party? That's not fun. How is that fun? I want to play Mario Party. I don't want to know if you really think Jenna's cute. This is weird. This type of game is like the game your weird uncle would bring to a family Christmas party just so he has an excuse to get wasted and do some stupid shit. The point is, this is not a very fun party game. Don't bring it to parties, and if you do want a party game, steer clear of this dud. Coming in at number 9 is Elvin and the Chipmunks The Squeakquel, which is hands down the most annoying game to listen to of all time. As if the movies and cartoons weren't bad enough, these high-pitched, not-funny characters were given this piece of crap game back in 2009. And to make matters worse, it's a rhythm game which you just have to point the Wiimote at the arrows and click. It's like Guitar Hero for kids who like to eat paint chips. It's just awful. The gameplay is extremely repetitive and offers absolutely no challenge to the players whatsoever. But the worst part about it, the game, is the god-awful music you have to sit through. It's just enough to drive you up a wall insane. I'd rather eat a pine cone than ever play this game again. Number 8 goes to Pets Crazy Monkeys. And if the use of Z's in the title doesn't give away that this game sucks, I don't know what will. I've never been a fan of the Pets series as a whole, but I think they're just kind of stupid. I mean, if you want a pet, don't get a virtual pet. Go get a damn cat. Go get a fish. But uh, Monkeys is easily the worst of the bunch. This was a clear cash grab of the popularity of the series at the time. They knew kids would buy it no matter how awful and shallow the gameplay actually is. There's actually about 20 minutes or so of actual gameplay before you run out of new things to do. Yeah, you can unlock new outfits for your monkey or you can unlock new types of monkey, but man, who really gives a shit? It's the same thing, which is with a different stupid suit on. I don't know why kids play this crap. It's hardly even considered a game. I mean, petting a virtual monkey is about as fun as watching the grass grow, so make sure you guys skip this game for sure. Next at number 7 is the Ultimate Board Game Collection, and bored is what you'll be with this one. This game is actually exactly what it sounds like, a virtual version of all the classic board games and a few puzzles thrown in for good measure just to spice it up. I don't know if I've ever seen anything sadder than actually trying to put together a virtual jigsaw puzzle. Like, just get an actual puzzle, you weirdo. Save yourself some time and money and trouble. That's just ridiculous. And what seems to be the problem with this game is, yeah, it, fine for, it plays fine for what it is, but why would you rather play this by yourself? Just get the games and play chess and play Chinese checkers with a friend in real life. I mean, if you have no friends and want to bore yourself to death, this game is perfect for you. But if you have a real life, I suggest burning this one instead. Number 6 goes to Action Girls Z with a Z Racing. Not sure why developers feel the need to use a Z instead of an S, but it never fails to be a shitty game when they do so, and this is no exception. This is another shameless Mario Kart ripoff, but nowhere close to as good as you can imagine. The controls are floaty and 
taking all kinds of weird turns not to mention the tracks are like they're literally designed by a four-year-old i mean whoever thought that insanely sharp turns and hidden doors would make for a fun race should be slapped in the face immediately again borrowing from the mario kart formula there are power-ups you can pick up on the map but they all are just about as useless as they get not a single one seemed to help me in any way in any of the races i played this game was originally released back in 2005 for the PC and PS2. It was later ported to the Wii in 2007. So they basically took an old shitty game and slapped on some even shittier motion controls and shoveled it into kids' faces on the Wii. IGN gave this game a .8 out of 10. Yes, less than 1. And that's for good reason. This game is just a pile of shit. Just cracking our top 5 is Anubis 2. This is yet another game that was first released on the PlayStation 2 and later ported to the Wii in 2007. You know, because we were all begging to play this already shitty game but with motion controls, right? Well, either way, we received this turd on the Wii and it's filled to the brim with br game breaking bugs. At almost every level, you can fall through to the bottom of the map and get stuck having to restart the level and repeat the same humdrum task of badly designed enemies and level design all over again. Your character only has two attacks and the hit detection on them is almost non-existent, making taking out even low level enemies next to impossible and fucking frustrating as hell. The cherry on top about this game is it has absolutely no storyline or plot at all. The only mention of anything of the sort is a short paragraph in the manual and all it says is basically, you are good and they are bad. That's it. If you see this game, please do the world a favor and just set it on fire. Number four goes to My Aquarium. And this game is a fish tank simulator. I know, it sounds amazing, right? But that's basically all it is. It's just a screensaver, except you have to pay money for it. And you have to somehow be stupid enough to actually take it out of the box, put it in your system, and turn on the TV and play it. Why you would do that, I have no idea. Why this game even exists, I have no clue. Was it for cat owners looking to entertain their cats during the day? Or do people really want to stare at fake fish on a television screen all day? I mean, you can like interact with the fish in some way and keep them healthy and all that stuff. But if you want a fish, just get a freaking real fish. They're not that bad. Either way, this game is terrible. And even if you can even call it a game, that is. So just throw this one away if you ever see it. Next up at number three is the ultimate winner, Seikabun Seichao Reina. Now this game can only be found in Japan and we should be thankful that this horror show of a game never made its way to the West. In the game, Reina, who is a cat, is the mascot of a blog named Nico Punch and is the CEO of a fictional company called Cat Queen Incorporated. It is the player's objective to appease Reina in order to get accepted into working for her. That's seriously the plot of this game, guys. It's to make a cat happy. And the way you do that is absolutely insane. You play all sorts of stupid little weird mini games as cats or as things to do with cats. It's just so weird. The game is seriously off the charts nuts. It's so weird that even Japanese people didn't like it as it literally sold less than 100 copies in the first week it was on Thor shelves before it was pulled. And our runner-up spot is what can only be described as the worst party game of all time. Party Babies with a Z yet again. And I'm telling you, if a game has a word that ends with the letter Z, just take it to the garbage and throw it away. Don't even put it in your system ever. It's not worth your time. Anyway, the game is just a bunch of insanely lame mini games with babies in them and themed around a baby party. It's just, oh, the, just the thought of it. Again, not sure who thought this was a good idea or why. Maybe they're playing Mario Party one day and they're like, you know what, fuck it. This would be better if we had babies and motion controls. And I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do that. No, really though. The games, mini games are cringeworthy and they're not even the slightest bit of remotely a little bit of fun. The game is the video game equivalent of AIDS. So make sure to stay clear of this one at all costs. Finally, our number one worst Wii game of all time goes to Ninja Bread Man. This action platformer is from the same developers as Anubis 2, so we should be looking forward to a great game, right? Wrong. The developers were even so lazy that they recycled most of the game assets from Anubis 2, which we already know was such a smash hit and not totally full of bugs or anything. Ninja Bread Man is basically just a reskin version of that game, but somehow worse if that's even possible. It suffers from the same terrible control schemes which makes platforming next to impossible to do in a platformer which is just a cardinal sin in that genre. 
the game only has three levels total not that i want to play any more of this piece of crap but still it's a letdown to know there's only an hour of gameplay total as we saw with anubis 2 the game is loaded with bugs and frequently crashes so it makes it difficult for players to even finish the missions it is massive problems with dropping frame rates so the graphics that are already terrible look even worse and this is by far the worst free game i've ever seen and it should never be played by anyone other than those looking to have a meltdown from frustration but anyway guys that is just my list i hope you guys enjoyed if you guys did make sure to hit that like button it helps me out a ton when you guys do that also feel free to subscribe for more videos just like this and check out my previous videos which i've done the worst nc4 games and the worst gamecube games as well as the rarest game series i did on the channel as well but until next time guys remember it's always came back time somewhere so take it easy and peace out all right guys like i said in the very beginning of this video this video was sponsored by retro game treasure they're a monthly subscription box where they send you a bunch of awesome old school retro games you guys can customize what you guys want in your box for what systems you have or what games you already have very cool so let's go ahead and do an unboxing I chose for myself, I wanted NES games and Super Nintendo games, so let's go ahead and see what I got this month. And right off the bat, it looks like we got three NES games. We have Bump and Dump, or Bump and Bump, Bump, Bump and Dump, Bump and Jump, I'm sorry. That's a good one. Ooh, this is actually what I've been after. I don't have this one, obviously. Uh, Ultima Quest for Avatar, it's like a $15, $20 game. That's actually a really cool one. I don't have it. I've been wanting to play that one. Oh, and this is, a, this is another one that's been on my list. This is actually Air Fortress. So if you guys are into that, that's pretty cool. And oh, and there's one more in here. <laughs> wow, wow, this is actually a really expensive game. This is uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors on the Super Nintendo. This is like a $40 game. Uh, this is a really, really fun game as well. I've actually wanted to play this for quite some time. I've never been able to afford it because it's like a $50, $45, $50 game. It goes up and down, somewhere in that range. But yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to give these games a play. I'm actually really excited to start playing some of these games. It's a great way to build your collection if you're going to start and they have Game Boy, PS1, uh, all Nintendo systems. There's something with more systems as well. And like I said, you guys can customize what games you want and all that kind of stuff. It's like 30 bucks a month. So look into that code down in the description if you guys are interested in that. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Take it easy. Peace.